Hey guys, it's Kyle Bennett with HardwareCPU.com, and you might remember last year we had the Coolant's uh, CPU 400A-S uh, water block for our Threadripper Socket TR4. This did very well in our testing, came in about a mid middle of the pack out of the uh, six blocks we looked at at the end of 2017. And if you recall, this block was actually based on Coolant's uh, model for their... Um, for their Intel CPUs. So the, uh, the, the, the micro fin and micro channel design was one that they reused from previous models, not specifically designed for Threadripper. So what we have in today is a new one from Cool Ants. And Cool Ants was very upfront about this when they talked to us that, the, uh, that this block was gonna be redesigned. So let's see, here's the new one the usual uh, mounting kit from Coolants, which is generally excellent. Here's our old Coolants block here, based on our old uh, Intel footprint from Coolants. Here is the new Coolants block. You can see some differences uh, that they've done on the mounting feet, and you can see some differences on the uh, chamber. Um, so one thing we found last year was, so you can see that our flow pattern goes across this block this way. And now you can see one of our suggestions we've had for everybody is to flow it uh, from the short side or the long side of the block across the long side of the dies that are down on thread rip. We thought that would get better cooling and it actually cool ants looks to have done exactly that on this. So I'm going to take both these apart and uh, we'll show you the differences of the uh, micro fin and micro channel footprint. Okay, so our older block, our older design block from Coolant is on the bottom. The newer design block of the 400A-S is on the top. And obviously you're gonna, you're noticing some tremendous design changes in this. Number one, as I said, they've changed the uh, flow direction down across the dies. So previously, that's our little fake die. So previously we had water coming in and washing long ways, flowing across the dies from the short side of the die. So we've changed that. So now, see the flow plate there is? You get flow across the coolant, or flow across the die of coolant from the long side of the die. So we should get better cooling in re retrospect of that. And also you can see that our footprint has changed dramatically from where we were previously. So you can see that barely covered that half the die, maybe two thirds of the die. And now we have footprint across the entire uh, thread ripper die. Uh, worth mentioning that these, the, the active dies, which are shown here in black, are always the active dies. These never switch locations uh, at all. So that's just a point of interest. So let's see, our rest of our block. Let's get our flow plate off. So we got a flow plate off there. That's nicely built. The machine work on this looks really good down in here. Got another O-ring here on the back. We want to make sure it's back in there correct before we insert again. It's so obviously our inlet flows across our flow plate. Let me uh, put this back down. It's our flow plate. It sits back down on here. This is machined out, so you can't put it in wrong as well. It's keyed nicely. Obviously, you can see the excellent job that Coolants does on their machining of their micro channels. This is a uh, copper with nickel plate, and you can see we've got 100% die footprint coverage on our thread ripper. So that's it. That's a uh, unboxing and breakdown of our new Cool Ants uh, CPU 400A-S, which the 400A A is for AMD. This is TR4. They've been totally. This has been totally redesigned for uh, thread ripper. We're going to get it on the test bench, and we'll show you how it turns out. This is Kyle Bennett with Hardo CP.